So today I'm taking out all my solar components out of my cabin and there are a number of reasons why I do this. Uh, the system has worked perfectly for the last four months and now it's time to upgrade. So this system has performed flawlessly for the last four months. Every single component has met and exceeded my expectations. It has supplied all the power I needed for all the different tasks, charging, heating, cooling. So reason number one is all these components should be mounted to a non-combustible surface. So everything has to come off the wall and I have some cement board that I painted and it's going to mount to this wall here. And then some of these components will be mounted back on uh, like the charge controller and the Victron bus bar system. Now, reason number two is I want to change battery chemistries. Uh, these are Nissan Leaf cells. They are specifically made for EVs. And uh, this is a lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide chemistry, which means it has cobalt in it, right? So they are very, very powerful and uh, I want to upgrade to a lithium iron phosphate, which is a lot safer than, than this particular chemistry. Reason number three is we are currently configuring an off-grid solar cabin for Northwood's cabin company. And one of the things I really can't have is these BMS wires, right? Customers may have kids, they may have pets. So I need something that's completely enclosed, doesn't have an external BMS and doesn't have these external wires hanging. Uh, because you pull any one of these wires and the battery basically shuts down. Lithium batteries, by and large, cannot be charged below freezing. So, which is handled by my Victron charge controller because I can simply just turn it off and uh, I can basically just tell it not to charge below freezing and you know that will take care of it. Uh, which is a solution, but th that solution is not good enough for me. So I'm converting to server rack batteries and I just happen to have one right here. So this is the Trophy Server Rack battery, lithium iron phosphate. And this battery has a 100 watt internal heater built in for the cells. So if the temperature drops below freezing, the BMS directs solar power to this heater to heat up the cells. And once the cells are above freezing, the charging uh, continues. The heater does not pull any energy out of the battery. So since I'm using server rack batteries, of course I'm using the opportunity to go from a 16 volt system. My battery puts out 16 volts. Uh, this Victron charge controller handles up to 17 volts, even though it's only a 12 volt inverter, right? Uh, but I'm going in at 16.4 volts and it's handling it just fine. So my new system voltage is going to be 48 volts. So let's take all these components off. First thing we gotta do is we gotta disconnect the PV array. So I have to disconnect my PV array first and I don't have a disconnect switch on the inside. Uh, this is, I'm using the MC4s as disconnects. So I have about hundred volts on this system. This should be fine. Here we go, disconnect it. I think you only need one, but what the heck, we're gonna disconnect all of them. Here we go. Yeah, here I'm verifying zero voltage coming in from the PVs. So good to go, safe to disconnect. Okay, I verified that my charge controller is at zero volts. So this is safe to turn, to take off my PV leads over here from the solar array. Yeah, 100 volts is no joke. <laughs> okay, so this is good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna turn my inverter off and disconnect the battery lead from the bus bars. Let's see here, inverter off. Pretty dark in here. Okay, so my PV leads are off. This is the inverter, this is the battery. 
This is the charge controller. I'm gonna take the charge controller off first, I think. 13 millimeters, it's all metric. So this is the inverter. It's probably a 150 amp fuse and I don't need that much. I probably have to drop it down to about a 75 amp fuse, but I'll see. So this is a battery, but I think I'm going to disconnect the battery leads directly from the battery because it's just safer that way. So therefore I'm not risking shortening this thing out because it'll be fireworks. So this is the main positive lead of the battery and it requires an Allen wrench, so. We are safe. Here we go. Positive lead is off. Uh, the negative is down here. I'm gonna take that off next, and then the battery should be free. The BMS leads over here. Let me see if I can connect this. Okay, good. So that would have shut down the BMS right away, and actually would have cut power to the bus bars right away. So, but anyway, it's all off. So all this should be free. Yep, the only thing on the battery is my small BMS. Right here, 60 amp BMS that I use for charging things with my Anderson connectors, like recharging other lithium batteries. Okay, let me get this guy out of here. Okay, so battery is out. Let me see what else we have. 200 amp BMS. Okay, BMS is out. So these are my battery leads. So this goes to the bus bar system. Here we go, working my way up to the charge controller. Okay, now I can take the charge controller off. Okay, so this comes off, here we go. Oh, Bluetooth. Okay, got the Romax disconnected. A little bit of a battle. Let me get this thing off the wall here. Yeah, so the only thing left, get uh, the bus bars off the wall. I forgot how I got them on here. Oh, there are a couple of Phillips screws right here. Okay, so the whole wall is clear. I'm gonna wipe the wall off. I don't know, I just wanna get the dust off. Oh, I gotta get the mounting bracket off. And then I'm gonna put my cement board on. Yeah, here you can see I pre-cut my cement board and I put a coat of latex house paint on it. Looks really good. Yeah, so this is called the Hardy Backer cement board. And I pre-cut it already for my cubby. I have a little piece left that goes on the top. And let me show you what I have here. I have uh, an access hatch for my electrical panel here. So I want to keep this open. That gets me to the back of my fuse box. I had to cut this in in order you know, to connect to my fuse box. So. so I probably have to measure where these holes are and transfer these holes into the Hardy backer board right here. It's pretty thin stuff, so shouldn't be a problem. I really like the finish, you know, the way the paint makes it look. So let's see if we can transfer the holes, throw some holes and get it in there. Okay, this is probably going to be pretty embarrassing. But I measured the location of these holes and I caught them. Let me just see. Let me see how wrong we were. Oh man, I like this. I can still have access to my fuse box. There you go. I need a little magnet on here or something. Yeah, so here are these two inverters side by side and uh, the 48 volt is on the right and the 12 volt is on the left. You can see the 48 volt is probably, I don't know, inch and a half, two inches shorter. Uh, what's nice is I bought this at Current Connected and they say it has been pre-programmed for lithium iron phosphate battery. So let's see how this goes. I think that's a pretty nice touch. So this is where I am right now. So one and three quarter inches lower than the other inverter. So I don't have to put anything up here. So this is plenty good. 
see what this looks like. So right now I'm just connecting the AC Romax wire. So I got to cut these cable glands off right here, fiddle this thing through, put them through the strain relief, and then attach them right here to the input and output terminals. Real quick update, I got the Romax connected. I still got to fiddle with the strain relief here a little bit. Okay, charge controller mounted. Let's get the bus bar in here. Okay, bus bar is in. Let's see uh, what we need from a wire standpoint. I think I can hook this up to the inverter. Okay, I got the battery wires from the bus bars connected to the Victron inverter. I got the charge controller connected to the bus bars. The only thing left to do now is to connect the battery. All right, folks, all done. Let's see what this looks like. We got the trophy battery, 48 volts hooked up, 5.1 kilowatt hours. Let's see what this all looks like. Charge controller on the left, it's already configured for lithium iron phosphate battery. I turned the low temperature disconnect charging off because this battery pack has internal heaters built in, 100 watt heaters that run off of solar power. Got the bus bar system all buttoned up. Got the inverter hooked up. Runs great. What I noticed so far, this inverter is a lot quieter than the 12 volt inverter. It doesn't buzz as much. So that's kind of nice. Yeah, here I'm bringing up the Bluetooth inverter connection and uh, just checking, make sure everything runs and see what the uh, wattage is. 17 watts right now, 52 volts going in. So that all looks pretty good. Switching over to the charge controller here, you can see I got 918 watts coming in. Batteries are sitting at 53.6 volts and charging at 16 amps right now. System is converted to heated lithium iron phosphate batteries in form of a server rack battery. System voltage is now 48 volts nominal. So that gives me much more efficiency on the inverter side. Uh, standby consumption of this inverter is only 11 watts which is two watts less than the 12 volt version had. Uh, I'm also very happy that the inverter doesn't buzz under load as much as the 12 volt inverter did. And overall, I'm really happy with the conversion. All right, that's all I have for you today. And I'll see you guys on the next one.